So I'm always telling people to get out there and walk around their investment area. And although it's now pouring with rain, uh, I've got an hour to kill because uh, I'm having an MOT done on my car. So I thought I'd take this hour and walk around Bristol and see if I can find any potential opportunities. So I'm just walking up this street and this is the first one that I've found and it's quite interesting. It's obviously a dilapidated building. It's in the heart of Bristol and uh, if we have a little wander up, I can see it's obviously got a building here, been broken into. Uh, what does it say here? So it says here, this has obviously been repossessed. Uh, date is, can you see that? 11th of October. 2019 so there's the first one and um, if I look here I can see can I see there's, there's like a big open space behind there anyway it doesn't matter it's all padlocked up uh, but yeah that's definitely gonna be on my list of properties to check out so this is an interesting one if I can cross this road without getting one over look at this place here can you see how obviously it's all closed down on the ground floor those definitely don't look like, you know, there's sheets hung up in the windows. I think they've been hung up there to temporarily give the impression of them being occupied. The ones next door are all neatly done. But if you actually look up inside that little window there, you probably can't see it. But you can see all the internal roof or ceiling is all decayed. So I would definitely be onto the freeholder of this property and find out what the situation is. Is it possible that I can buy that abandoned shop and the accommodation above as one freehold? So I've just turned into Gladstone Street, is it? Uh, one of the things that I'm always encouraging people to do is to look for potential plots. So I just had a wander down here. Can you see these houses uh, over here? Uh, get it as I walk past, I'm gonna do it a bit quietly for obvious reasons. Um, as I walk past, look at the garage and the space to the right of the garage. That definitely you could fit two of those houses on. They would fit. So I want to go to the land registry now and do a bit of searching, find out who actually owns those plots and put a letter in the post to them. Uh, let's see what they say when they come back to me on it. And one of the things you've got to do when you're doing this, and I'm not doing it, <laughs> is you should bring out a paper map with you. And you need a highlighter, and you're going to mark on there every single road that you walk down. That way you can make sure that you're covering every single side street road, uh, and you're walking down every single area that you can. You've got to check this one out. I wanted to start filming this one from back here. Um, can you see here, this is a huge corner plot, but on top of the roof there, if you look, there's just loads of debris and, well, rubbish, basically. Uh, I'm trying to lift my phone up so you can see it. But all of that site is owned by the garden, uh, oh, sorry, forgive me, by the house, or at least it looks like it. It's on a corner plot. Could you perhaps get two houses on there? One kind of coming off of this road just here, and the other one leading in from this road here? I would definitely be investigating that one. This one's quite interesting. It's actually like a kind of fairly large plot uh, in terms of its length, but very narrow. But actually, all of the houses in that kind of area are actually quite narrow. So I wonder if I can actually get another house stuck on the side there. Now, it's going to be narrow, as I say, but you've got the potential, compared to the other properties here, to fit something on there. Under the latest permitted development rights, you're actually able to build on top of existing buildings with certain criteria being observed naturally. Can you see the height of these though, and this one? Then look at this one here. Well, let's imagine that this is actually owned by the same freeholder, and I'm going to imagine it is, and then rent it out. Could you build on top of there? I'm very confident that you could, and you could do it under permitted development. Again, look all along here, they're all much, much higher. So this isn't really a current opportunity, but I just wanted to show you what they've actually gone and done here. They've gone and taken a slightly older building, and can you see they've actually gone and built another flat? In fact, I think it's two flats on top of that building. Plus, in the car park out to the rear, you can see just there, hopefully, they're also building some additional flats. I ain't gonna say, it is definitely worth putting a letter in the post to this person here. And at some point in the future, they will want to sell. 
could you then potentially build one or two additional flats in that area? Especially when you consider that that's exactly what they're doing over the road. <laughs> it is really boring now. But when this house comes on the market, I will be sorely tempted to buy it. Build here, draw a line down here and have that as one separate house because it has a garden on the other side. And then maybe make this either one whole new house or two separate flats. So I feel I've got to kind of wind this one up in a Kevin MacLeod style -y. What have we learned, if anything, from this exercise? Well, I've been out walking around for just under an hour, about 55 minutes. And in the process of doing that, I've obviously found lots of potential places where I could add massive value. I've actually found more than I've shared with you because two or three of them, I think, have got absolute real potential. And so Leon and I are gonna do a little bit of digging on those ones before we start sharing them, if that's okay. I'm sure you understand. But the point of this exercise was to demonstrate that all around you, there are places where you can add massive value. Places that probably aren't currently on the market, uh, so you're not going to see them on right move, which is not a bad thing because it means that nobody else is going to spot them. You've got to spot them. You've got to get out there and start to look for these opportunities. And when you do, you're going to start writing to that individual, not just once, but again and again and again. And at some point, if they're not on the market today, they will be. And at that point, they're gonna remember that person that kept writing those letters. And that's when you have the potential to tie yourself down a fantastic deal. Now, if you do this, and please do, if you want any help, if you find an opportunity where you're thinking, could this work? Is this a great opportunity? And you want a bit of help, why don't you book yourself a coaching call and I'll do everything that I can to help you tie down a fantastic deal for you.